and affordable housing. And tonight we're going to be talking about healthcare, always a timely issue. And to help us discuss it, I would like to introduce David Hildebrand. He is returning to Uphill Media uh, for a, a return visit. We are glad to have him here. David is a candidate for U.S. Senate in California, running against Diane Feinstein. He currently works as a legislative analyst in Sacramento. He was the staging location director for Bernie Sanders' campaign in the California 6th District. And his platform, as one might expect, includes campaign finance reform, education reform, environmental protection, and healthcare reform. So we're going to talk to be talking about, about that with him today. Welcome to our show, David. Except that he just dropped. <laughs> oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> I, I don't know. I was watching it. We we're getting ready to go. I'm like, here we go. And then he drops. Oh, dear. So here's David's card, everybody. <laughs> here's David's card. Well, in this picture, I'll have you know this picture was taken today as he was flying back from Los Angeles. He was participating in the women's marches. He's even got his boycott Driscoll t-shirt on there. If you're, if you're not already boil, boycotting Driscoll berries, <laughs> you should. <laughs> and what oh, else can I say? <laughs> Hey, hey, this how it goes. Yeah, come back in. <laughs> this can't happen three shows oh, in a row. Oh. <laughs> Everybody's laughing at us. It's all right. Well, uh, there he is. There's oh, he's back. back. There he is. Unmute, David. <laughs> you could talk about infrastructure and the internet as well. There he is. <laughs> all right, there's David. Oh my God! Thank you. I'm so glad to see you, David. So all I, just... I saw is uh, disconnected and and wait, and I was like, no, no. So I actually unplugged my hard line and put it on Wi-Fi. So we're just gonna uh, play it by the seat of our pants here tonight. Okay. Well, we you know <laughs> we we do that well. So I just introduced you. Welcome. We are glad to have you here as someone who is boots on the ground in Sacramento and really had kind of a front row seat with what happened with our healthcare legis legislation last year. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who want a refresher, SB 562, the Healthy California Act is what we're talking about. And uh, tell us a little bit about kind of the history mm -hmm. of you know, how, how this came about, what's happened to it, where is, where is it now, and what can we do to shake this loose? Well, it started basically the first time Californians tried to get single-payer health care. Universal health care was in 1994. It didn't really go anywhere. And then Sheila Keel introduced uh, 840 in uh, 19 or 2006, um, and it was vetoed by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was introduced again in the next session, and in 2008, it was vetoed again by Governor Schwarzenegger. So this this uh, a bill for universal health care, single-payer health care, has made it through the Democratic legislature before, even before we had a supermajority. And we have a bill in the legislature now that hasn't been able to make it through the second house, even though we have a supermajority. So some things obviously change between the now. Uh, my suspicion is that it was passed by some people who wouldn't necessarily pass it in the past because they knew it would get vetoed by the governor. Mm -hmm. Whereas now we have a supermajority and a Democratic governor, for what it's worth, that should just pass it. But now it's being held up for, for reasons unknown and well, reasons known in the legislature. And we're looking at all the, uh, the assembly members and senators and how they get their money and who they get their money from. And we're really seeing a lot of correlation between donations from healthcare insurance industries and ph pharmaceutical in industries to the same people who are ardently against SB 562 or say they're for it on the surface, but then when it comes time to vote, suddenly they don't want to vote on it or they don't want to move the bill, Speaker Rendon and specifically. So it is stuck in the Rules Committee? Yeah, so right so right now, basically, if you're in, stuck in the Rules Committee, you can't do any amendments. You have to amend the bill when it's outside in a policy committee or when it's on its way to one. You can't do anything if they if they won't allow you to move the bill. Um, Rendon and others have said that the nurses and the proponents of SB 562 haven't done anything in the last, like, several months mm -hmm. when when we can't do anything to push the bill forward because it's in the Rules Committee. So they say no amendments or financial informations have been sub have been submitted when there has been a whole study has been done for financing mm -hmm. for the bill. Um, and they apparently want to ignore that. Um, several studies have been done in the past of how to fund single payer. 
There's a lot of ways to fund it. I have my own preference of how to fund it. Other people have theirs, but but the point is the funding's there, but until we release the bill, we can't do anything about it. Right. And who has the power to, is it only Rendon that has the power to release that? Is the, What can compel him to, to change? I don't believe, uh, I'm, I'm just going to be really like honest. I don't believe that Rendon will change his, his mind about releasing the bill. I believe that he's got people in his back pocket that don't want him releasing it. And that's why he's not releasing it, because there's no other excuse not to release the bill. I've been a legislative analyst for over six years now. And I've watched bills go through the legislature and get signed by the governor with no funding plan. So you can't go through this time and say, oh, this this ha doesn't have a funding plan, so we can't move it into the second house and, and allow it to be voted on or amended. It just doesn't make sense policy-wise or the way things work mm -hmm. or systematically in the legislature. So if, it, if nothing happens, can't... oh, yeah, so, go ahead. I'm sorry, I don't mean to jump in, but just because we had Allison Hartson on last week, the week before, <coughs> And when I'm with, the same question came about about this bill, her answer to that was that uh, it was incomplete and that work needed to be done before it moved on today. Why, why would that be a different position from what you're saying here? It sounds to me you're saying the opposite, that it was fine and bills move forward this way. Why would she say that? What am I missing here? I, I don't know why she would say that. When a bill is in the Rules Committee, it can't be moved forward. So you can submit amendments, but they can't be put into the bill until they get to committee. So I don't know why she would say that. Like I said, I've, I've been in legislation for, for like for as an analyst for over six years, but I've been doing legislation for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And that's just that's just how it works. That's how the policy works. You can okay. kill bills in different ways. And that's one of the ways you kill it is holding in the rules committee. Was one of the things that was at, at, at issue is that the legislation as, <coughs> it had, as it had passed before might have more more in it that you could add to this bill if it would if it was finally released so that you could make amendments and make it more like the ones that have passed through the legislature before and that's an argument that the people that are against the bill the opponents of the bill bring up is they say mm -hmm. well the, the past bills were more complete so my my counter argument is okay if you if that's your your argument and that's your concern well then release the bill and amend the bill to match those past bills and they have no answer for me on that mm -hmm. <sighs> Well, so folks, that's where we are with SB 562. It's right there, the Healthy California Act. Um, now, what I want to move to know now is that you were um, at the Women's March yesterday in Los Angeles. And I think, um, John, we've got the video that showed the group that uh, David was marching with. Is that <coughs> handy and ready to? That's okay. There we go. Ah. With a women's march in Los Angeles is taking place right now. We have our contingency for healthcare for all, as you can see. And we're gonna be marching soon and we're gonna be leading one of the contingencies here, one of the streets uh, of the parade. There I understand that there's gonna be like four different areas where people are going to be marching. So here we come, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the Senate bill. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the Senate bill. The pride of the nurses. Here comes the Senate bill. Two, five, six, two. We're out moneyed, out manned, out lobbied, out planned. We got to make it all up then. Yo. We're going to need every California. Check it. Can we be real a second for just a millisecond? Put down our guard and tell the people how we feel a second? This bill is a model of a modern healthcare system. Found in all industrialized countries, including Britain. It would put an end to the rich poor health schism, cover and tally residents, and an insurance dominance and prominence. But the elephant's in the room. The truth is in your face when Rendon shoves the bill with a boom. Oh! Join the healthcare revolution! So what was it like? Tell us what it was like at the march. Uh, tell us where this is where when you were starting. Tell us what you did and um, and how how did people react um, to to your message? Well, we got there. Um, the original intention I was going to join the uh, the people protesting Rendon, and basically we we're going to do a shout out while he was up on stage speaking. 
And then uh, I met up with the Medicare for All um, contingent and the nurses, and they gave me jobs. So I said, okay, let's do this. <laughs> So at first I was holding the banner up front, as you see there, and the, and after that I actually was handed off one of the letters because someone needed to switch off to take video and do some other stuff. So at the beginning I was actually passing out literature and it actually on the back it had Rendon's number in a paragraph to, instructing people to call Rendon. So I was walking around the march letting people know about SB 562 and what we needed them to do to, to get on that action and, and call Rendon and tell them to release SB 562. The majority of people at the march were like, yeah, of course. And I was telling people, you know, the SB 562 would cover all women with their health care because it covers everybody. So people were really excited to hear that. And a lot of people who didn't know about the bill now mm -hmm. know about it and now want to actively call Rendon and release the bill. So we probably reached about 200 people just in that one little area because there's, I think, four of us handing out the flyers. And then as we, the march progressed, we actually reorganized and went to the front of the march or near the front of the march and set up. And we actually had several news cameras for the promoters of the Women's March itself Good. recording us. And we had like a crowd all around us on both sides because we would flip around one way and flip around the other. And the letters also flipped and had two different messages, mm -hmm. Medicare for all and love and health. <laughs> so uh, you'll be able to see that in the, in the video if you watch it online. Mm -hmm. But basically, we had hundreds of people taking pictures of us, getting involved, cheering us on. At the mm -hmm. end of the march, because we marched, as as you know, with the rest of the people in the march, the banners and everything, um, at the end of the march, we actually went out to the grassy field that they were sh had the big screen on, and they were showing messages from different people, and people were talking, and music was playing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually went right in the middle of the field and set up. And we did the whole Medicare for all chance and and marched right onto the field and everyone was cheering us on and uh, everyone was really excited. So it was it was actually a great experience. The, the group down there is very, very organized. They do a lot of activities down there. Mm -hmm. um, I was mentioning off camera earlier that during Rendon's speech, um, there was a group there to protest that. And when he got off stage, one of my friends went up to him with a sign, a recall Rendon sign, and he held it as a sign and asked for his autograph and then handed him the sign that said recall Rendon and had Rendon's picture on top of snake heads uh, on the, <laughs> on the oh my goodness. thing. So, so the picture online is hilarious of Ren Rendon after that happened. He has the most sheepish, sheepish face on mm -hmm. and it's just hilarious. So th this is the kind of stuff that the nurses have been doing for a while and mm -hmm. activists for universal single payer healthcare have been doing for a while. <laughs> we've done a lot like we took over the capital a couple times for a couple different events i think i've only actually missed one single payer sb562 rally or march since we started which was in i think january or february mm -hmm. which brings up the posters behind me that you see um basically if you want to flip the camera to me i'll show everyone um what i've got behind me <laughs> Yeah, but basically, yeah, so so over here we've got um, when we protested the Capitol, the knife in the back has Rendon's name on it. Um, the one below it, grow a spine past 562. I brought that to the Sa uh, uh, Sacramento County uh, Central Committee and held that up while we were talking about a, a resolution to censure Rendon. Um, and then I'll lift this up and you can see my newest edition up top there is from the Women March. Mm -hmm. The future is single payer. And we actually had a bunch of those signs and other signs at the march. And you can see other ones there. Mm -hmm. So these signs have been collected since January, February. Um, I've helped canvas for the sing single payer health care for SB 562 cents. Obviously, I got very busy doing this campaign. So I haven't mm -hmm. been able to do that as much. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's been a busy year. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm an activist in a lot of different areas. But this is basically my pet project, if you will. Yeah, and that was the reason. That was the reason yeah. that I thought of you when I when we were planning this show. Is that that you've been? The, I've been watching you in the front, reporting to us about what's going on. I wanted mm -hmm. to touch a little bit on just the kind of the irony of having Anthony Rendon as one of the key speakers <coughs> at the Women's March in in L.A. And you already mentioned that there were people um, protesting. Did 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 it? Did, did it seem like a lot of people realized that that was weird or was it or, or did they think that that he was a, a normal person that should be speaking? Well, uh, you have to remember that a lot of people that are involved with uh, the Women's March aren't necessarily there because of state politics. They're there because of federal level politics and they're right. there to protest Trump. That's the real energy at the march. 
Mm-hmm. So a lot of people we talked to hadn't known prior to the fact that SB 562 was in the legislature. They might have heard about single payer, or heard about the protests and whatnot, mm-hmm. but they didn't have a lot of details on it because that wasn't their focus, especially right. on that day. So we actually got the word out to a lot of people at the march. Um, when when we told them about Rendon holding the bill, we were passing out the legis- the, the literature. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were shocked. Like, why would he do that? Why would he hold back a bill that you know would help women's health and help all women get covered from homeless, you know, to the wealthiest person in the state? Everyone would have medical coverage free of charge, or well, at least free of charge on the uh, on the one end. And and people were just shocked that that he would hold mm-hmm. it. And I mentioned the fact that he was speaking there, and they were shocked that he was speaking there when I mentioned about how he was holding the bill. So so we actually did a lot of education there. Um, obviously, a lot of the chants had single payer, you know, release the bill, SB 562. So a lot, we, we actually were able to educate a lot of people at the march who are now going to hopefully be turned into activists and at least call. Well, fantastic. And there's a picture that's up uh, right there is also from the, uh, the San Jose Women's March, which had a, a mm-hmm. very large contingent of Medicare for all folks there. Now, I appreciate you mentioned this uh, earlier about uh, state versus federal. You are actually running for a federal office, not for state mm-hmm. office. So I appreciate you spending all the time talking about the, the implications here on the state level and for your activism over the last year. Maybe um, f- kind of as a, as a closing statement, uh, let us know about health care reform at the federal level. What would you do um, if given the opportunity to represent us in Washington, state of California, how would you help us along in the healthcare fight? So obviously there's a couple bills out right now. There's uh, 676 and 1804 currently, uh, well, as active as they can be. We have a lot of co-sponsors for those bills, but not enough. (laughs) My thing is, if you're going to have Democratic legislators in office, Um, that will not sign up for single payer when it's a popular bill. We've got, in some reports, 61% of the population of the U.S. wants it, 71% of California wants it. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned in other shows, and I believe on your show in the past, um, Dianne Feinstein is against single payer health care. She calls it the government takeover of all medication or of of all health care. Well, right now we have a corporate takeover of all health care. So we really need to move Democrats away from that. The issue is corporate donations. So as you know, I'm not accepting any corporate donations. I'm a corporate free candidate. I'm not corporate funded or sponsored. And there's several other candidates um, across the U.S. that are also running for Senate or Congress who are also not corporate sponsored. So if we get enough of those people in, we'll have a real powerful group. The concern Mm -hmm. is that if we elect the same corporate sponsored candidates into office, then once the Republicans fall out of favor and the democrats take back over we'll still be in the same position we were in before right so they'll they'll make up an excuse not to support it once they're back in power and we'll have business as usual and that's because they get the funding from the health insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies so we need to elect the, the number one action item i would say is to elect people who do not accept corporate donations funding or sponsorship mm-hmm. and and move those people forward at all costs so like in states, in safe states, like in my race, where we have a progressive running against an obviously non-progressive candidate who's a Democrat, there's a no-lose situation here. Right. So if and no matter who wins, it's going to be a Democrat. So if people are worried about the state falling into Republican hands, there's about three Republicans running and no one's ever heard of them. The Republicans will not run a serious candidate for Senate because they can't win and they know it. So that's why the last uh, Senate election, we did not have one. We had Harris and Sanchez, and we voted for the uh, more progressive of the two, however much that's worth. I guess everything's relative. But but at the end of the day, the, the number one action item is electoral politics. Um, secondly, obviously, is protests and marches and show the strength that we have. We can do this on the state level. You can get involved with your local DSA groups or through CNA or NNU, that's California Nurses Association or National Nurses United. They have actions going on all the time. We have local groups in your areas that you can find very easily on Facebook. And you can sign up for those groups in Canvas. You can go on marches. They are knocking every door. So it's not just like a simple, you know, we're going to knock Democratic doors and only Democratic doors or anything like that. They're knocking all the doors um, and talking to everyone about SB 562. Good. So, so at the end of the day, I, I think that 
all this canvassing is going to have a really positive effect, not only now, mm -hmm. but if we go to the ballot in the future with SB 562's language and mm -hmm. we want to pass single payer through a ballot initiative as we can in California, as you know, we will already have talked to a lot of people who will then vote on that initiative because they heard us and they saw us come to their doors and talk to them about the bill and they agree with it and that's what they want. At the end of the day, it's common sense to have single payer health care. Fantastic. That's a, that's exactly what we're working for. Um, any questions, Joseph, from... Um, from we had a few questions in the beginning about whether or not it was possible at all that we can force Rendon into doing the right thing here. Is there really any chance of that or do you just completely say no, no chance of it happening? I would never say that there's no chance of it happening. I think with enough political pressure, we could actually get him to change his mind. We actually currently have a recall campaign. I mentioned or I inferred earlier that is basically recalling Rendon. We already have the signatures turned in and we already have a candidate, Maria Estrada, in his district who is running against him. So we have all that in the works. So we've put as much political pressure from the outside as we can on him. I think the real issue that we're seeing is there's not enough political pressure from the inside. One of my opponents in the U.S. Senate race, Kevin DeLeon, is in the mm -hmm. Senate side, so he can't push Rendon, you know, technically he can't push him, you know, in the legislature to move the bill, but he can put political pressure on him. So Kevin DeLeon's one of the, uh, one of the legislators that will vote for something good, but won't fight for it. So we, mm -hmm. we don't need hesitant people anymore. We need activists. We need mm -hmm. people out there actually fighting for bills and not just signing them and or co-sponsoring and then stopping there. So Kevin DeLeon could have used his political influence and his leadership in the Senate to push Rendon in the other house by publicly excoriating him and pushing the bill through doing that. But he has chosen not to do that. And instead of sitting back on his hands and just hoping for the best, mm -hmm. which would be him getting elected without actually having to stand up for anything. Do you see SB 562 going anywhere in 2018 then, or? I, like I said, I'm hopeful if we could get the bill released, if we put enough pressure on him and get the bill released into committee, then at least we can have an up or down vote on it and we can amend the bill. And <clears throat> if it's allegedly not complete, as they say, then that will erase any excuse of that. And I really think that that's what they're afraid of is, is getting into that position where they have to prove that there's no way to fix it or that it's incomplete and they won't be able to prove that. So I really think that they're scared to release the bill. So as, as I mentioned before, we need politician with spines who are actually gonna do their job. Most politicians don't write their bills, uh, special interest groups do. So they're not, they're not in the business of actually doing anything for the people. So this is like out of place for them to actually pass something that's gonna positively affect people. Okay, we have a question from Oz. Uh, do you think it would be a good strategy to network with all progressive candidates across the country to unite behind the joint issue of single payer national health care? If not, why? Well, that's an obvious yes. Um, there's actually a, a loose slate of us in California. Stephen Jaffe, uh, Jovanka Beckles, Michael Bracamontes, and Delane Easton are both on board. And we're Gail McLaughlin. She's no party preference. She's 100% single payer. So we have a governor position. We have a replacement for Pelosi. We have a lieutenant governor. We have me for U.S. Senate. And we have several other people across the state forming this loose slate, give or take, that's against, you know, this holding single payer back for the state and for on the federal level. So again, you know, we've already have people um, doing doing events together. I've done a lot of events with Gail, Stephen and Michael um, where we all showed up at the same event. We're all for single payer health care. We're all corporate free um, and we're really, you know, working out there together, uh, doing the same things, trying to get single payer, you know, out on the front lines. It's one of all of our main issues on top of being corporate free. Mm -hmm. and ending Citizens United. So, I mean, it's a very important issue and we're already allied towards that cause. So when it comes to organization and making it a central issue, that there could be some strengthening there where we make it that. Mm -hmm. But I really see all parties already doing that unilaterally. So I don't know if it would be as much of a push to have us all say it at once when we're all saying it on our own. So I don't know if that'd be really a necessary strategy, but it'd definitely be a welcome strategy. Well, for anybody under the, the blanket term of progressive anywhere, that's pretty much a standard uh, policy plank anyway. So I think that that's uh, 
you know, for the, for the most part, we've, we've covered that, but just, I like the idea of, of forming, uh, forming alliances and slates, especially, mm -hmm. and as we get closer and closer to the general and see who is, you know, who's going to be going to the general. I like the idea too, of, of everybody, you know, wh whoever's going, everybody you know, gets in behind them and supports them all the way through to the end. Yeah. So that's, that's an important part of it. Um, any other questions? Uh, one last uh, one last question from Metalhead, not necessarily having to do with uh, the current topic, but how is your campaign going? David? It's actually going great. Um, we've been all across the state already. Um, we've been up to Redding, Chico. Um, we've been in the Central Valley, Modesto, Manteca. We've been to LA, Ventura, and basically everywhere in Southern California except for San Diego, but we'll be there in the end of February for the convention. I'm going to the North Coast uh, in two weeks, and I'll be back in L.A. next week for the Feel the Burn L.A. Um, endorsement meeting. So Ooh. if you're in the L.A. area, please show up to there if you're a member especially and vote for me for that endorsement. 